Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. Today we're going to have a look at the BIOS of the MSI's MPG X570 Gaming Plus motherboard. I'm also going to go and see if I can show you in the BIOS how to adjust your fan speeds so if your radiator is going at full speed like my currently is, which I don't have a problem with, but if you want to adjust it, change how your fans are working in there, I'm going to show you that too. And we'll have a look at a few other things that uh, you might find quite beneficial. Here we go. Okay, so first things I want to go over here is your XMP. So you got your AXMP for overclocking your memory. Now, in this case, this is not supported. That is because even though I'm running DDR4 memory, which is what it needs, it is value memory. In which case, whatever the clock speed of that is, that's where it's going to stay, which the default is 2133 megahertz. So I can't change it unless I get overclockable memory. So you have to look for the XMP when you're buying it in order to get it. If you're getting value memory, this won't be available. So looking at a BIOS, you see it tells us our date, gives us all our information, our BIOS version and the build date, which is pretty current, 22 June 2021. It's about a year old. It's probably newer, but uh, that'll be for a different video or update the BIOS. There's three different ways you can update the BIOS on this, by the way. But again, we're not getting into that right now. Uh, here you can see we're running at 100 megahertz. CPU ratio is at 37, so it's 3.7 gigahertz, right? So just all the information here if anybody's interested. So we're going to go for memory, okay? That's where we'll find out all our DIMM slots are occupied, okay? 8 gigabytes, and so times 4 is 32 gigabyte, and that's the default speed that they will run on. There's no XMP profile because I don't have anything set up because of this memory. Storage tells you we're running a two terabyte XM, XPG Gamex S11 Pro, and that's all we've got until I add more later on. Fan info, this is where you can go in and change some of your fan. So your CPU fan speed is 4153, so you're running at 28 degrees. Fan speed, system fan speed, no, I don't know why that says zero, but, we're going to play around a little bit. Let's see what we can change, what we can't. Right? So right now it said that uh, these are your different fan curves as they refer to it. Okay, so it goes 0 to 20. It goes 20, 65 to 75, and then 70 to 100. Okay, you can adjust all this. Okay, your chipset tells you how it's going to run. Okay, your different temperatures. All right? And if I had it plugged into the pump, which I don't in this case, I'd be able to change that or have a look at it at least. Okay, so we're going to go back to here and let's see. If we click on System Fan 2, 3 and 4, nothing's going to change. But what if we go to Settings? Okay, so we can show you more information in here. Your CPU, the system, okay, chipset, Okay, all that kind of good stuff. Everything is showing you up here, but you also have all your voltages and everything on the bottom. Okay, I'm not going to get into that too much. Right now, it's set at all full speed. You can choose Smart Fan. Okay, that will change everything around. How much? I don't know. We'll have to have a look. All right, so we're going to exit out of here. And let's see if it makes any difference. 53.78. So I actually think that's running faster than before. So let's let's keep playing. Let's see what else we can do. So let's go back to I want to get back to settings for the fans. Okay, so if I want it to be a lower fan speed, I can adjust this. Okay, I have to lower this one, this one, or this one. I'm going to show you a different way too. I'm not going to save any of this because there's there's different methods. Not mine is not necessarily the right one, All right? And then I can lower this again. Okay, I can take it down to basically it's like quiet, but I'm not going to keep any of that. 
If I was to save it right now, it would save it at whatever I've got it set at. But there's better ways of doing it. So we're going to go to advanced. We're going to go to settings, I believe it is. Let's have a look. Actually, I'll show you some other stuff here first. We'll come back. System status, system settings, okay? Shows you all this kind of information, your DMI information. So it doesn't let you go too far in, just because there's not a lot there. Yeah, let's just go back. Advanced. Now, give me one moment. Now you can do the overclocking if you accept it, and you can go ahead and start overclocking. Okay, I'm not going to do that right now. I'll have lots of time to do that later. Your NVMe self-test, secure erase, wake up. Your Windows OS configuration, okay. So secure boot, you can go in here. Right now it's disabled. If you want to go to Windows 11, you have to enable this. But you also have to go into the FTPM and make sure that's enabled too. Now, you can go and there's something else I'm looking for. I'm just trying to find it for you here. Okay, we're going to go back. There's something I just saw recently. Also, if you want to know if you're running a new EFI or legacy, this is where you're going to look. So systems, advanced, Windows OS configuration. But I have a video on how to do that. So if you go in and you're not running a new EFI and the shortcut that I did a video for doesn't come up, it's probably because you're running in legacy mode. Just something to be aware of. All right, let's get back. Boot. No, I don't want that. Actually, I do want, okay, under systems and security, trusted computing. This is where the AFTPM switch, okay? So you have to go in here, you have to enable it. Then you can go in here and make sure that this is on. So as soon as I enabled it, this was, it's enabled, all right? So I'm going to disable it because I don't want to go to Windows 11 yet right now. Mind you, it doesn't matter because I'm not changing any of this or saving any of it. So it's not going to hurt anything as long as I don't save it. Now, if this suddenly shut down, you'd be fine. So it doesn't save it until you hit F11 and save, all right? But that's just to show you uh, how to go to Windows 11, those two things. I have a video on that too, just so you know. Um, you can do it in administrator password. I don't suggest it because if you forget, you lock yourself out of your own system. Save and exit. If you click that and go save changes and reboot or just save changes, then whatever, you, whatever changes you've made are going to be there when it boots back up. That might be what you want, but if it hasn't, well, you're out of luck. You're not going to be able to, um, you may not be able to get back into your BIOS. So just be wary that if you're changing something, you know what it does, what its purpose is, and my recommendation, change one thing at a time, unless you know what you're doing. Because if you don't, and you lock yourself out, you're probably going to cost yourself a lot of money or a lot of heartache. Maybe both. So the other thing I want to show you is under the overclock. So in the overclock, you've got overclocking, advanced CPU configuration, and AMD overclocking. Once you've done that, you get to in here. Precision, precision boost overdrive. Now on this board, it's automatically set, so you don't have to worry about it. If this is not enabled, you should do that. That's just my opinion. It can help the performance of your CPU. And I've actually heard that some of the 7000 series, it will actually lower the temperatures. So I haven't tried it yet. I do have everything ready to build a system with that. So I will try that. So right now, if you decide to do that, that's at your own risk. But I mean, it's already on. And they wouldn't set it at default that they didn't feel it was safe. But I'm just letting you know there's risk for anything you do in the BIOS. So beware of what you're doing. All right. So that's... All we're going to go and go to the back so you can see. So AMD overclocking is where I went. And that came from advanced CPU configuration. All right. If you're looking to find out where that's at. If you want to flash the BIOS on this. Okay. I'm not. This is not a BIOS update video. So just putting that out there. 
on your M flash if you click that now if you have that feature it's going to come up and it says system will auto reboot and enter flash mode do you want to enter flash mode now, I'm going to say no because I don't want to but if you want to you say yes but make sure you're all ready to go because you need a flash drive it has to be a certain format all that kind of stuff I will do a video on that later on just not doing it in this video I just wanted to quickly show you some of the features that are here so you know what they are so if you have an overclock profile it'll be in here all right it'll all show up hardware monitor okay this is back to our fans all right now right now it's on smart fan mode okay and if I want to change it to PWM it definitely changes everything okay when it's in smart fan mode you can make adjustments so all full speed it's gonna ramp up you'll hear it hear that? now when I adjust it again back to smart fan mode It's going to adjust itself. So if it's running in idle, it doesn't have to spin as hard. It's going to make its own adjustments. We do want to get out, so I'm just going to find where that's at. I think it's under settings. Save and exit. And this is where you're going to discard changes and exit. All right. Quit without saving. That is what you're going to want to do. And that way, you can go in, you can play around, you can look at everything that's in there. But as long as you don't save it, no harm, no foul. If you do save it, like I say, make one change at a time. Okay? That showed you real quick, just a quick way of changing the fans to lower them using smart fan mode. All right? And, of course, the default settings, which is full out. And I changed it to PWM, which is what all the fans are, as opposed to DC. Quit without saving? Yes, I want to quit without saving. And that's it. It's going to exit. All right. So that was just a quick convoluted way of guiding you through the BIOS, showing you the, some of the different things. So if you want to go to F11, you need secure boot and you need the FTPM enabled. How to adjust from uh, DC to PWM for the fans and how to go in a safe fan mode. So it can make the adjustments for you a little bit. And by doing that, it can make it quieter. Now, when you go in, some of the, your software may give you the options of quiet performance that kind of stuff and that'll give you more options to quiet them down even more if you want to do that okay so that's totally something you can do um, you see where if you have memory that's not xmp enabled you can't overclock your memory okay so what do you got is what you got and nothing else now obviously i'm not going to leave that in there i just use it for the tense test bench so i will buy some more ddr4 memory for that particular motherboard so I can get a little bit more out of it. All right. So then you will go in and click that XMP, A-XMP. And then that will overclock your memory, exit and save, and you're good to go. So hope you got a little bit out of this video. Nothing intense. Very simple things of how to make some changes in your BIOS. Again, these things are not without risks. Make one change at a time. On, only if you know what it is that you're changing. Look it up read about it okay how to flash your bios you have in flash okay there's there's a couple different methods you can use the app software to do it and there's one other but i'm going to get into that more in depth in another video of how the different processes of updating your bios now i've done a couple already so whatever one i haven't done i'll touch on that so if you want to have a look i've shown that in other videos and it applies kind of across the board but there are slight differences in the differences for the manufacturer of the motherboard. So just be aware, look for the video. If, if I don't have one, look for the one that's specific to your motherboard. Okay, like the motherboard manufacturer, like either MSI, AS Rock, or whatever. And just do it that way. Okay, and follow the method that works for you. If you want to do it through, through the app, you can do that. Just make sure you have a good internet connection. Um, that you're on and ups would be helpful so you don't lose power in case something should go wrong 
and you don't ruin your motherboard in the process. All right. Anyway, that's enough for me blathering on. Hope you like it. Hope you got something from it. If you did, leave it in the comments. If you didn't, leave it in the comments. Tell me what you would like to see. I, I just kind of stumble across. I don't really know the BIOS 100%. I know a lot, of, lot more than I used to. But if there's something you want to know specifically, mention it to me. I'll find out and I'll do a video on just that. All right. So if you like it, hit that like. Leave me a comment. If you're new here, think about subscribing. Hit that bell for notifications to see videos as they come up. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day.